Hi right, guys, it's West Coast Arachnids. Today we're going to make a little lunch for our uh, slings. Um, I decided on making a fruit fly culture. I had to go and purchase one to start off with. So I purchased this about two weeks ago I guess when I got my tarantulas in. And I've been uh, feeding them off slowly but there's probably a couple hundred left in there. And what we're going to do today is make our own little fruit fly culture. The, just the media that goes on the, in there. And uh, we're going to put it into these. And with the uh, leftover fruit flies, we're going to use them to, to start the uh, flightless fruit fly culture. Um, these were cheap. I mean, they were only about eight bucks. Uh, and you can see on the top, it's got little holes in it. And it's got some kind of uh, cloth inside there just to keep the airflow through there and what I've done is I've just replicated it like this it's got a screen I've taken two lids and what I did is basically I cut the outer lid off like this the hole inside and then I cut a hole in the middle so I had a donut and then I placed the cloth over it and <clears throat> put that over top and then I hot glued, sorry about the shakiness, I hot glued the uh, the center circle and the outer circle. I'm just going to put this up here so you can see better. Okay, hopefully this doesn't take a tumble. <clears throat> now what I have here is just uh, some media for them to climb on. Just some kind of, it looks like cocoa fiber. I got it out of a plant hanger thing. This is just goes into a plant hanger and I just kind of tore it out. Now that's just sitting in uh, some hot water. Um, as you can see, they've got some kind of wood in there. It's just shavings. And they just use that to climb on. So for now we're going to get these flies out of the way. And we'll get started on this. <clears throat> now what you need of course is a container with a lid that has aeration. You can fasten any kind of lid like you can even take uh, take like this so you have just the outer ring that fits on there still snaps on and just take, take a pair of pantyhose or something cut it out make sure that you get your own and not your girlfriend's <laughs> or your wife's or your mother's and then put it over top and then just snap that lid over top you can do the same thing with a paper towel um, it's just going to be a little more difficult to put it back on and these flies they they want to come out fast uh, they crawl straight up they crawl towards the light so um, next thing you need is something to look, mix all this stuff in uh, really overripe banana, the overriper the better, some active yeast, any type will do, some little little bit of sugar, teaspoon and a half or so. <clears throat> now a lot of people do this different ways, I'm going to add some apple cider vinegar, some people add cinnamon uh, to keep the mold down, you can add white vinegar, and then uh, I'm going to use some mashed potatoes um, <clears throat> as as the rest of my media, and we'll just get them mixing. First thing, just peel this banana. I don't know if you ever seen it peeled this way, but so I peel my bananas from the bottom. You just pinch both sides, and it comes off nice and easy. You don't break the top. And then we're just going to put that in there <clears throat> and mush it. I think I'm going to knock everything over if I do it there.
We're just going to add a little bit of sugar, you know, teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. A couple of sprigs of this, a couple of sprigs of that. <clears throat> a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar. This will also, a uh, great way to, to get rid of fruit, fruit flies that are flying in your house, not the flightless or the flightless kind, but the actual ones that fly. You take a little bit of apple cider vinegar, take an upside down cone and put it inside of a jar and they'll fly down in, but they can't get out because of the cone. Same concept for a crab trout. And then, because they're really attracted to that apple cider vinegar, I don't know why. Maybe it's the fermented apples. Uh, uh, another thing in here, uh, um, applesauce will be good. It's already got sugar, it's got cinnamon in it. Um, then we're just going to mix this up a bit. <clears throat> you want this to be about the consistency of dough. Not, not really like a bread dough, but like, um, a dough you would use, maybe like mashed potato. I mean, we're going to use mashed potato mix. This all this is just powdered potato. And we're just going to add some of that in. Now that's just flaked. Now we'll add it as we'll add it to need. I bought all this, bought the mashed potato mix specifically for this. Not to actually eat because I don't really think there's any nutritional value in it at all. Other than complete starch and sugars. And this here, nice bottle of vodka, I mean, it's just hot water. Just put a little hot water in there. That was literally boiled uh, two minutes before starting the video, so part kind of hot. <clears throat> now it's starting to lump up, you know, you can take it and it, it's not falling off the spoon anymore. That's good. It's kind of the consistency you want so that, you know, it's not wet. Um, when your fruit flies go in it, you don't want them to drown in the media that you're making. So that's perfect. <clears throat> and then take a little bit of yeast. You know, just a little bit. What you want to do is literally kind of just, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about half of this, sprinkle it in. The other half, I'm just going to leave it in the lid here for a minute. You don't want to pour that back into the jar because that will uh, ruin the yeast inside. Once it's touched your skin, it's got moisture on it. And yeast is uh, activated with moisture and that would kill the whole culture in there. So, once you've got that, you need your little container. Use the other one. This is the one I washed. <clears throat> I want to kind of wash up everything. Stir this uh, yeast into the mixture. That little bit of warm water there. I'm actually going to add a little bit more because it's kind of lumpy. So add just a bit more water. And that warm water will start that yeast, yeast, yeast activating. I want you, you're ideally looking for about an inch at the bottom of this container. And one large banana should do that with about, you know, half a cup to a cup of uh, 
that mashed potato mix. You could also use, like I said, oatmeal, uh, applesauce. Uh, the oatmeal and the, the mashed potatoes is more of a thickening agent. It's a starchy agent to get it to, uh, to stand up like this. Now, you need to mash that down to the bottom. Get it in there, get all the air out. Now, what I like to do, just to get that nice and even, is just pound that down like that. And there you go. You've got a nice even thing. Just make sure you turn this upside down when you put it back down on the counter. You're going to have more of a mess to clean up. Now with this leftover yeast, you're just going to sprinkle it on top. like that. You don't need a whole ton. Let's get you down there to see. So it just looks like that. It just looks like a little bit of powder on top. You know it's not completely covered. I better get over there and see if you can see. This uh, camera is about five feet off the ground right now. So, that yeast is going in there. I have to vacuum yeast all over the room. So now, taking this out of the water, I just put it in some hot water just to rinse it out. Give it a good squeeze, get all that water off. It's not gonna hurt, just shake it out. What you want to do is you need to open this all up nice and wide, get it all separated. Kind of like you would do with sphagnum moss for your tarantula cages. And take the opportunity once you have it like this to just shake it. Try and get some, some of that excess water out of there. Um, like I said, it's not going to hurt. If it does go down, it's just going to activate the yeast a little quicker and it'll soak into the mashed potatoes. There's not enough on here to harm anything. So you put it in there about halfway, just like so. <clears throat> I'll show you what it is. And there we go. So you got to be about an inch there of a uh, the media, the culture, this banana mix, and then you know that's three quarters to halfway. That's good, perfect. This one here, they had a little less culture in there, but you can see that the, the green on top is more than likely a mold. So, you don't want to keep these in the room with your tarantula, although I have mine in here now making it. But I don't think it's going to uh, actually transfer in there as it's uh, a mold that's growing directly on that substrate of that the banana mix and it probably won't survive in uh, your tarantula cage unless you you know put sugar and stuff in there. It's probably a different type of mold altogether like bread mold kind of thing. Now, you constantly have to tap these. Once they're open, you'll see right away what I mean. Let's get this light on here. And we'll pop the top. And you can see the first thing they want to do is go up. So just tap and they'll go back down. It'll, it'll knock them back down. So what you want, just keep tapping and they'll fall out. You can see them falling into there. Now you gotta tap two of them. And you get about 50 in there or so to get a good culture started. And 
and then just pop on your lid. Got a little water in the lid. And we'll, uh, there is your fruit fly culture. Now in about a week, what you'll see is uh, almost little worm-like creatures or slug-like creatures crawling up the, from the bottom. Don't be alarmed. Those are your uh, larvae of the fruit fly. And about a week after that, maybe a week to two weeks, you'll, they'll start hatching all over the place and you should have tons. Now keep this in a room temperature area. You know, you want it about 70, 70 to 80 degrees. Um, whatever, you know, if you're keeping your tarantulas at that, that's perfect. But like I said, don't keep them in the same room as your tarantula. Um, when you go to feed your tarantulas, these you can slow them down a bit. If you find that they're getting out on you too quickly, just put them in the fridge for, oh, half an hour or so, maybe an hour, a couple hours, most, before you go to feed them. And then... Pop them out of the fridge and they'll be slowed right down. Then you can take them out, just kind of tap them out into a cup or whatever you want to put them into and slap a lid on both and there you go. You're ready to feed them out. Now you can feed these to your dart frogs if you have them. You can feed them to fish, uh, baby tarantulas, that's what I'm using them for. So I got tons of little slings now. So they're awesome to feed those. Anyway, that's it. Here's your fruit fly culture. These are flightless fruit flies. I'm not sure the scientific name of them. Um, I'll keep you updated on how this is doing. Uh, oh, and by the way, you mark the date. Uh, time's not really necessary, but the day and the month um, on the on the container somewhere so that you know when the culture was started. They usually last a good, once the flies have started, about a good month or so. And then you need to, you'll see them starting to die off or the numbers aren't so great. Uh, that's when you really need to start another culture. Uh, once you let them die off, you're stuck buying another uh, culture to start a new one. Anyway, y'all take care. Have a great day and bye for now.